Hi everyone and welcome to today's webinar. Uh, first some information, I'm really sorry that uh, a lot of you wasn't able to attend the last webinar. I had a GoToWebinar account for 100 users that has now been upgraded to thousands, so there should be room for everybody. This session will be recorded and you will receive an email after the presentation so you can watch the replay or send it to any colleagues that missed the, uh, the webinar. Today we have over 700 registrars. This uh, topic we're going to talk about today is, is very hot. The same sessions at Citrix Summit was packed as well. And today we have a lot of people from big companies like Citrix, Dell, HP, NVIDIA and IBM, just to, uh, to name a few. We have a surprise for you later on. Uh, we are joined by Jerome from Login Consultants, Login VSI, excuse me. That's going to reveal some really great news to us. So first off, uh, Thomas, could you tell us a little bit about how did you start working with remote graphics? Well, I uh, actually started uh, working with remote graphics when I worked uh, out of uh, at a customer called uh, Vestas, who created Venturevine, and they were actually asking. Um, well, they they had a lot of uh, some people who were working in R and D, and they had a lot of data uh, and a lot of CAD where they want to centralize it. And uh, well, I heard from some rumors that Project Picture uh, was getting uh, developed, and uh, I reached out to Citrix, and uh, well, that was actually well, the first time I got my, my hang of the XTX 3D Pro. That was in 2008, and it was the first client where I, where I did it, and I saw the potential of the technology. And well, since 2008, I've been evangelizing it, and a lot of stuff has been going on since that time. So that's that's well, <laughs> I have a pretty Make a passion for it, <laughs> but now today here the, the GPU is becoming more and more common in virtualization. So I saw it many years ago. The potential. Cool. The and technology. and your own short presentation about yourself. I'm uh, Jeroen van der Kamp, Chief Technology for Logan VSI, and um, uh, we've been doing benchmarking and load testing of video environments for a very long time, and hopefully at the end of the presentation, I can explain what we're doing with graphics workloads. Yep. Okay, cool. Then I think uh, Thomas just let's rocking. Let's get rocking. Right. My name is uh, Thomas Popogard. Uh, uh, I call myself a technology evangelist. Uh, so I have my own company, independentpopogard.com. So that's also some of you who know my blog, where you can go in and read all about graphic workload and, and such on. So that's what I did last year, becoming independent and now globally help clients with remote graphic solutions within Citrix, NVIDIA, and Microsoft, and the HPC space. I'm a, I was awarded Citrix professional, uh, Citrix technology professional CTP by Citrix in uh, last year, uh, just like you, Trunk. So pretty proud about that award. I was also awarded by RIS, uh, the RIS software value professional also last year. So two very nice awards uh, for, for the work you do, you contribute to the space. Uh, up in the right, you see the, some of the videos I have. So I have a YouTube channel uh, where you can go in and, and type in blogpublicall.com and you can see uh, how I uh, show the user experience on, on typical pin clients and, and all kind of different workloads that's not made for, for these uh, devices. Right. So let's look at the agenda. Uh, there's a lot of information I'm going to pass through, so I had to speed up some of the stuff. Um, first of all, I'm going to show you some stuff where how the evolution of uh, remote graphics, how it's been, uh, where it started and where we are today. So a lot of stuff has, has happened to where we are now. Then I'll drive you to which kind of technologies is available from from um, from Citrix um, and uh, also of course actively VMware how they're competing. Uh, I show you how the market is demanding and and, and changing uh, for these technologies and give you some small examples on some use case studies. And um, also last, I have a lot of bunch of stuff with the new uh, Nvidia Grid and how you can uh, cut up the GPU even more with TCO. So 
last year a lot of stuff happened. Uh, first of all, the start of the year we saw the CEO of, of Nvidia and Citrix. They went on stage at Citrix Energy and uh, talk, told the entire market that now you can uh, take a GPU and uh, cut it up to small pieces and, and virtualize the GPU. So that was a very strong message seeing both uh, CEOs saying we, we can now do this, this technology is mature. At VMworld, we saw uh, in October, we saw uh, that EGGA, a direct pass through to the GPU, was uh, finally supported now in 5.1 and 5.5. And uh, that means also uh, the view 5.3 is now supporting a direct pass through. So you, now you can use all kind of uh, OpenGL and DirectX applications with all versions. VMware is also now embracing virtual graphics with 3D. So they have uh, hired a lot of people uh, going to that market. So they're also supporting it with Citrix. So that's something we I, I got from uh, the, the people that was saying it to the public. So that was one of the words. Uh, so clients can, if they have a Citrix stack and they want to use hyper uh, vSphere, they can actually, if they get issues, they can create a support ticket at VMware and, uh, well, VMware will, will assist with it. Uh, we Another new support, uh, new thing was released was that VSGA now supports AMD GPUs. So uh, there are two GPUs uh, competitors out in the space. There's NVIDIA and there's AMD. There's also Intel. We don't see them so much, but it's primary NVIDIA and AMD. Another thing is that VGGA uh, now s uh, support uh, uh, NVIDIA GPUs. They're actually not supporting uh, AMD GPUs uh, currently with the direct uh, technology. You can do a hack uh, where it's supporting, so you can actually get it working. So let's look at the, the evolution. So, Thomas, could, could you speak up a little bit? Yeah. Is it better now? Yeah, the audio was a little bit low, so. Okay. Well, our shout out. So uh, in 2006, that was actually when the, the company Boeing were reached out to NVIDIA and Citrix uh, asking if they could build the technology. So uh, that's actually how we, we saw that the HTX 3D Pro w w was made. There was a collaboration between NVIDIA and, and Citrix. And uh, the software was uh, generally available in 2009. And uh, if we look at the competitor, VMware, they were actually in 2008 coming with uh, their view stack uh, where they're putting in Teradizzi. So that was a one-to-one -one basis. Uh, so they're a bit earlier. But uh, it, Citrix had the deep compression codec so they could take a uh, high-end graphic application and load it from uh, all around the world with, uh, with high latency up to 220 milliseconds, or 250 in some cases. Uh, working, uh, so that that's pretty impressive. That that's the, the deep compression codec. Uh, in 2011, uh, Citrix uh, released the hypervisor sensor, making it possible of having multiple GPUs to each virtual machine. So that means reducing the cost. Uh, if you look at VMware, they were actually in, in 2009. They were they built the technology just with PCI for uh, pass through. But it was not a, a supporting technology until 2013. So that's how you can see the two competitors uh, competing each other. Uh, in 2012, uh, the Citrix went in and optimized the code, and they have increased the, the frame rates with 50% and the bandwidth has reduced with 50%. So keeping making the technology better and increasing the amount of screens and, uh, well, Making, making them better for, for the clients and the demand for it also. So that's also what actually, if you look at what VMware is doing in 2011, they have, uh, they're supporting uh, soft 3D with CPU rendering and they will also optimize the code. So they're doing 40% bandwidth reduction. And in 2012, VMware uh, introduced SVGA, VSGA, and you probably see Gunnar Berger, the video, uh, Gunnar Berger from Gardner, he created a video comparing VSGA with the vGPU from uh, Citrix. So there are limitations with VSGA, uh, with the special, it's only limited to OpenGL 2.1 and uh, the specific version of DirectX. 
anyways, it was introduced there. So in 2013, that, that was actually the big, uh, the big uh, bang of where the entire industry is changing, uh, what I just saw the picture before the CEO of NVIDIA and Citrix. So first of all, GPU sharing uh, with high density grid cards uh, was uh, released. So you can take uh, uh, one GPU with multiple GPUs and split it up, make it that cheap, uh, cheaper solution. And Synap, you know, the good old Synap, which is back now, uh, actually you could share uh, OpenGL and WebGL and OpenCL. So that's the new thing in 2013 that you can have multiple people connecting to a Synap workload, sharing the GPU. And last, with the vGPU, uh, we're using a grid manager, so you cut up the grid cards even more, even reducing the cost. Uh, so let's come back to that. So at VMware, one of the things they released in 2013 was actually now the VSGA is supporting uh, 5.5, and they're also supporting AMD GPU. Uh, let's, oh, sorry. So <laughs> I just also want to say that Citrix actually is supporting the AMD for the setup. Um, if we go back to the VMware part, uh, GPU pass through, uh, they are then uh, embracing that and supporting that for the U5.3 and the Citrix. And they also have a new HTML5 H264 codec, so that's the project blast if they want to hear about that. that. So, bunch of stuff. This is the new part for virtualization that we need to, to understand. So, we have different five uh, different uh, factors how we can do GPU solutions. Either we take bare metal system with the GPU and you take a piece of software, either Microsoft Citrix VMware, and then you connect to your machine and you work. Uh, then you have uh, the, the software graphics. So that's uh, where you're actually using software rasterize. So then you are actually compromised, how you can say you are the user experience is compromised because you're doing GPU to software to CPU. So it's not GPU, but it's CPU who's utilizing that. The other one is shared graphics. So that's remote remote FX from Microsoft and Citrix, uh, where they also are taking some. I think they're actually taking now the full GPU and sharing it with OpenGL DirectX, VMware with the VSJ. They have similar limitations. The pass through that is. The, the the native, so the pass through can be can, can be shared with the experience with the direct mapping, and the last is the hardware virtualized GPU, is where you're cutting up the GPU even more. So, all these five things is something that you have to learn and understand uh, the need of. The best of choices, again, this is the one uh, we will be releasing afterwards, so you can go in and, and pick which technology that fits in best. Uh, so this is a good uh, spreadsheet that's been made uh, to choose the technology that maybe fits into your need. So the industries that needs typical the the, the graphic workload, uh, the industry is changing right now. So uh, over the years, I've been primarily been focusing on uh, all on the engineering, on the automobile, construction, energy, and high tech. So one of the new things that that we, we are especially seeing is actually the the, the gaming companies have the same requirements, even the broadcast and, and film industry, because they're sitting and, and also using actually some of the same applications, that's Autodesk and Adobe products, and uh, even some special engine that, that's made for, for 3D graphics. End of the day, they require GPU, and they want to centralize the, the data, uh, because uh, securing the intellectual property, that is, that is the critical part, why they don't allow people to, to take the data home. Another thing is data is also increasing massively, and uh, people have to say, how can we build uh, smarter solutions to, to work fast and, and get access to the data? So satisfying the, the users, embracing the data is uh, expanding uh, massively now. Bring your own devices is actually really also uh, getting more and more increased. I'm seeing that, especially in the companies where they're saying, we need a Mac. We need to embrace that. How do we do that? And suddenly they say, oh, well, our software is maybe not made for that. But they say, well, the guy who works in R&D, he, he, he's getting a Mac. We need to embrace that. 
and how can I work from, from anywhere? Maybe I have this special device where I'm scanning and I want to put that quickly up to the cloud. Instead of today, probably people are putting it to a local disk, they walk on to an office and the data keeps on getting older and older. But uh, people want to work in the data real time. So a lot of the typical uh, business drivers is that, uh, again, securing the intellectual property, working from anywhere, uh, collaboration of, of sharing content is also uh, something that's really going on now, where multiple people working on going into a, a room and, and work with other people through online meetings, but they're also demanding the data the real-time data needs to be there in the technology. So that's that's something where, where we're taking, that's multiple technologies where actually they, they're demanding the remote technology together with the, the video casting. So that's need to be working together. So that's that's also uh, something that some clients are, are requiring. Yeah, so this is a video I've made of the typical to show how high uh, graphics is, is working on any device. You can go into YouTube and see it. I don't, I don't want to go on to it. So it just gives you a good example on typical what, what some clients are doing. They are typical, some of the even small clients of, or up to the, the medium in, enterprise, they have data across the world. They, well, if they of course have the office around the world, but a typical see that they have the data across the world and they need to take care of all the data being in synchrony. So this is just a, one example uh, that I've been, been showing many times, which is actually one Citrix I'm using, but it could be any company. Uh, I mean, actually 70 gigabytes of data is, is actually nothing. I mean, now a company I've worked with many times, we're talking about terabytes or petabytes. So data is really increasing. So what does it mean? Well, the data increasing, then it also takes much longer time to be synchronized and you're going slower to the market if you're not taking care of it. So centralizing all this data into one place and making people uh, be able to work real time, then you can uh, work very fast and efficient. And of course, also uh, secure the intellectual property and being able and agile. So that's the, the, the benefit of uh, remote uh, graphics. So take a good example, move away from your traditional workstations where you have, they have their own images, their own little data, and no, nobody's sharing it, and you're not mobile. Why not put all that machine into the, the data center and centralize it and, you know, cut up, make, you can provision quickly desktops, sharing the, 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 the hardware much more efficient. I, I, I'll tell you an example. So let's say some people, they, they go in, they work on some machines, then they go home. The, the efficient about this is that when they go home, typically the people in another work zone, they can then take the machines which are free, and then you're suddenly reducing uh, the, the TCO uh, and you're really being efficient. So Citrix, they have these four stacks here. They have the, the hypervisor layer where you can cut off the GPU and they are now supporting the NVIDIA uh, vGPU. Uh, the tech preview is not, <laughs> it is actually a final uh, supporting version. This is another slide, sorry about that. And Citrix and desktop is the technology where you can take a, a physical desktop or virtual desktop, either a, a non-persistent, non uh, I can say a non human uh, machine where you log in, if you do a change, you log off, it is gone. Or you can get your own personalized. So that's the persistent uh, desktop from a virtual world. The Synapse is a resource where you are accessing uh, to uh, either physical or virtual machine and you're then sharing the resources with your, 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 with the other uh, sessions. Uh, but still it's secure. Uh, what the user sees actually in this solution is because the application is already running, you don't have to wait for it to load. So the actually the experience is actually faster than this, the, the, the VDI. So that's the center world. The last was the remote PC where you take 
uh, this software and put it into existing uh, machines, and you don't have to buy new hardware for doing that. I just go fast through some of these uh, case studies. Uh, one of them is uh, Research Laboratories, a company up in Sweden, um, and the other one is Vestas and Maersk Oil. So Vestas, what uh, they are a wind turbine company, and they've been uh, actually been uh, using this technology since 2008 for for 2000 remote users. Um, they have actually reduced the cost by by 30 percent from a traditional work uh, CAD row station. Please please note that this is actually with physical machines. This is a one-to-one -one scenario. They're not, they're not using a sensor or they're not using the vGPU. So they can even cut it up much more. They just had they had a demand for working, uh, getting a, a machine working from from anywhere. So that's a good example on uh, we're embracing the technology. Another one is research. They have uh, many uh, doctors uh, or clinics around the world where they have uh, multiple machines before. So it means that they had an environment where they were producing a lot of heat and a lot of screens and, and a lot of machines need to be uh, managed. So they virtualized that and actually making with a thin client, they connect you up to the machine and they work real time with the, the huge amount of data uh, when they do their cancer treatment. So they had this, this is a good example on very crucial uh, data uh, where they need to, to work uh, secure, but also, yeah have to rely on the technology. So again, the technology is very mature. They've been actually been doing this for quite some years. So Research uh, is, a, is a company that uh, developed the software and they sell it for the clinics around the world with Citrix and, and Dell hardware. Another example is uh, Maersk Oil. This is an oil gas company uh, that uh, did a PUC for last year where, where they're using uh, uh, they, they would like to do uh, to take uh, the geologists and uh, go into one office room and uh, look at the uh, seismic data and while they look at the seismic data they would actually like people from different other offices to also look at the data and then interact to uh, to, to, to the, the data so going from one office to a collaboration room sharing the data with your colleagues around the world. So that was actually a pretty high demand, taking uh, a Citrix technology stack, and they actually combined it together with the uh, with, uh, with Cisco uh, UCS uh, sandbox system. So we centralized the data and uh, shared the data in the collaboration room, and they could actually be able to work from, from anywhere, even on mobile devices, uh, on a tablet, sitting and using Petrol on a tablet, pretty impressive. So they could deliver any app on any device at anywhere. So this example, you can see the, the guy on the left, he's sitting in Denmark, and on the right, we're seeing a graphic high intense workload because I can't show this as metadata because it's uh, confidential material. But here we still show the technology, how it works. So we're seeing uh, the guy on the left, he, he looks at the, the stuff out at, in uh, Qatar, but that's very far away. Here he's recording with the, the phone from Denmark, looking at high graphic intense application from NVIDIA that's made for actually for a very high end gaming card. So that's pretty impressive. We'll, we'll be using remote uh, HTX3D Pro together with a Cisco uh, UCS Sandberg system. And we have the latency with 200 milliseconds. I know bandwidth is 50 megabit, but listen, latency 200 milliseconds and we're combining two technologies in one. That's pretty impressive. You can just do that. So this is a good example on true collaboration between Cisco and Citrix. This is stuff I've never seen before where actually it is possible doing it. I know with Link this is not possible. That has been something I've been trying to do where simply technology is simply going to do it. This is another example where you're using a fin client connected to a setup session and we're putting up on four screens. Pretty cool. Remote graphics, so you can work from anywhere, any device on the move. So that's basically what it does. Good place to start is tearing up the, the users you have. So 
this is actually the big change that's happening now. So for for high end, how can you say high end graphic demands? That's what we've been typically been doing for the past couple of years. Uh, so that's been for the CAD applications for T1 and T2. If you take T3, so that's the new thing that's actually changing now. I, I'm seeing that the, all the browsers companies, Microsoft with Internet Explorer, Chrome with uh, from Google and, and Mozilla with Firefox, and even actually Safari, they're using now the GPU default when they are utilizing the browsing, showing the graphic. So what does it mean? So what does it, it actually means they have uh, recognized the GPU is much faster than the CPU and gives the user experience a much, much faster one. But what does it mean when you take these kind of users into virtualization without a GPU? Well, they do software rasterize. So you have an impact because the CPU then suddenly have to do that faster. So it means that your CPU is, is even peaking up higher and actually your users are, are seeing a much worse uh, experience. So typical setup users where you're not designing with the GPU, you will see much improved experience just by putting a GPU to a normal setup workload with browsing. But that's something that's that's very new. Another thing is also Office, especially Office 2013, is also using much more uh, uh, resources and they are using GPU for, for some of the special things are in PowerPoint and also some parts in, in actually in, uh, in Word. So that's also re highly recommended to put that in. Again, tearing up the users. So one size doesn't fit all with these solutions. So going in and classifying which kind what you need is, is, is a good thing to start. And how can you do that? Well, I actually re now recommend you can do assessment. So that's something I, I, I want to show you. Some of the, that's a new company, uh, well, not a new company that, but the company Lakeside Software is about to uh, release uh, the version 7.0 of SysTrack that can do uh, um, assessment for GPU uh, intense uh, workload. Also, um, one of my uh, good friends, uh, Hildy Klein, has just uh, built a software tool, uh, UberAgent for Splunk, which can also go in and look at the, the machines you have and the, the GPU, how much you're using it. So understanding the behavior is a good, a good way to do it before you just buy the big, bad, meanest uh, hardware. And then you can fit in the, the users for the special need and for these kind of workload. So you can say, okay, this guy, he needs his own virtual machine, and this guy, he can share his machine with other colleagues. He's not that, he doesn't require that much uh, intense uh, graphics, and so on. So all this stuff is something you can do now in uh, seven, the sub seven one. Citrix, they have a receiver for any client. So you can sit on either a tablet, smart, on, a, on a smartphone, or a thin client, fat PC, Chrome, Mac, and you can actually sit and take your GPU workload and, and work from anywhere. But it's actually the entire experience happening in the data center, but you're just looking at a screen where it's uh, sending out. If we then try to compare the tier one and the tier two, so what is the tier one? That's uh, the VDI, I say, and the other one, tier two, that's not, uh, I say, RDS, well, that's, a, that's actually Senap. So one of the new things, uh, oh no, <laughs> sorry, one of the new things. So the difference, right, as it is today, uh, whether it's the seven one, is that the 3D mouse is uh, only supported on VDI because uh, in uh, Send Desktop, uh, VDI, you can only uh, do USB uh, redirection. Uh, you cannot do that on a, on a SO 2008 and SO 2012 with Citrix Senap, not yet. Um, so that would be nice when they get that fixed. That is, I know that's that's some work that's uh, that's going on. Um, but actually, there's a lot of advanced stuff going to the tier two model. Uh, I'm seeing a lot of clients who has already has H six three D Pro tier one. They want to go to tier two because the experience is actually very close to tier one now. But they can have much more users on. The license is much cheaper. 
but the applications need to be compatible with a uh, showering system. But again, as you can see, both are supporting OpenGL, CUDA, OpenCL, DirectX, and they are both using also deep compression codec, but there still is a difference in the two technologies. So I created a video that I put up on YouTube, actually where you can see the, the difference on uh, the user experience. Uh, so the typical a, a guy who sits and work with a graphical workload, he immediately when I say, can you see a difference? And some people say, no, I don't see a difference. And typically the guy I sit working with, he can see, yes, I see a difference on the, the, the solution to the right. It has a bit smaller frame rate, but we're talking about small, small margins. This is just one example on uh, where you see the, the user experience compared. But I think Citrix has done, done a really amazing job by, by, by uh, with the Synap now that is very close to uh, the VDI with HTX 3D Pro. So some of the things you have to be in mind is when you take uh, all your machines and you centralize it, it is that each user who connects up to the machine, they are using, of course, some bandwidth. This is where Citrix are uh, still the leader in the space where they have the, they're compressing the bandwidth. So they need up to about 1.5 to 2. Well, about they say in general, it's 1.5 per user. I see some cases, it all depends on the model, how they sit and work. Sometimes it can even be 50K per user, sometimes 250K. But again, if they sit and have working with a lot large models, and there's a lot of graphics going on, even if the screen resolutions are actually getting more higher, we're talking about full HD and so on, well, of course, then also the bandwidth goes up. But still, it goes up to about 1.5, even with full HD. That's pretty impressive. With Synap, it goes a bit higher up with that, so but they have actually reduced this with 50% compared to the previous. 3D mouse, that's all, I already covered that. So the clients, just, just to give you an overview, you can get the HTX, uh, Citrix receiver for any client now, and you know, take your high -end graphic workload. So this is another video I've created uh, where I sit on the phone and uh, I connect to, uh, this is actually an application that was just released uh, and I made done with the Falcon program from Autodesk. Uh, where you can take uh, any objects and simulate uh, the, the wind uh, real time. That's pretty impressive. Uh, so here I'm switching from the phone to the tablet. And uh, here we we'll see I'm actually able to, uh, to interact uh, with my fingers and, and actually interact in real time in the application with the data. That's pretty impressive you can do this. Uh, and I just think this is. Well, this is the important thing, that if you want to take these things and you want to put in a mobile device, you also expect when you touch, it move. And then actually, this actually does this. So now I'm switching from the tablet to uh, the computer, the fat PC. Let's see here, we go over to a Mac. I log in to the machine. And this is actually, <laughs> anyone recognize, this is actually not the the new Citrix. This is actually the old one I'm showing you. It's pretty, pretty good actually. Um, and actually, the new Citrix of seven one is actually much, much better. Uh, but still, this is actually one of the So here you see the, you're working around, and you expect it runs smooth and nice, and you can zoom in and so on. Okay, let, let's look at uh, what's going on. In the industry right now. So NVIDIA is doing a fantastic job by uh, uh, making the entire virtualization, embracing the GPU. So that's something they have done and now finally with the, the grid cards. Uh, the grid card is uh, two different GPUs. Uh, the K1 is four GPU on one physical board, which has 16 gigabyte of memory and uh, about 768 CUDA cores. So that's the GPU power. Uh, the Grid K2 is much faster, uh, has a bit le less GPU memory, 8 gigabytes. It has two GPUs on one board, but it has three, uh, ooh, what is it, 3,000, 
and 72 could of course. Yeah, so that's much more powerful. And let me show you how you can virt build virtualized solution with this and how we scale it. Again, this, this is what Sutra Cap is embracing. So typical in a normal VDI workload, you create a hypervisor on your server and a virtual machine, and then you sit on a, on a client. So that's what you can do. Send server, vSphere, Hyper-V, right? And all the operating system, 7, 8, and XP. You can either use Citrix here, and then use IK, HDX, and the VSys either, and you connect them. So if I want to put in GPU into these uh, technology stack, let's do a direct pass-through. So I put in the GPU, and I pass through to the virtual machine. The GPU is recognized. The driver is being loaded in the operating system. And then your cable actually are up working on the high-end uh, graphic workload and the, and the client. Now, which kind of GPUs can you put into to direct pass-through? So let, let me show you guys. You can use NVIDIA Grid K1, K2, and you can use the Quattro cards. Uh, you can use also the new Quattro Kepler cards, uh, so that's up to, to new K6000. You can uh, even use the Quattro Mobility cards, the multi-carrier, as HB, who is doing stuff with that. And uh, last is also AMD. They have the Fire Pro uh, R and S series, so that's the R and the server series, where you actually can take that card and put it in and, and pass it through. So the hypervisor you can do this with uh, today is uh, the sensor with the PGPU. Yes, that's called the PGPU, so that's you know passing it directly. Uh, VMware they call it VGGA, so that's virtual direct graphic uh, where you're passing it through to the virtual machine. By doing remote, you can use uh, send desktop with both sensor and vSphere. With view, you can only use it, of course, with the, with the ESX. So that's a one-to-one, -one, what I just showed you before. So that's the limitation with that. So let's cut it up even more. That's, there's new stuff that uh, NVIDIA uh, released in December of last year is the vGPU. The, together with Citrix, let's show you how this is possible. So you install a grid software component in the hypervisor layer. And then the GPU, uh, you attach to a virtual machine. And the NVIDIA driver is being loaded, and the state is communicating down to your grid manager and saying, OK, I want that GPU profile. All the graphic commands are then sent direct to the GPU. So it means you, you get actually just the same experience with the, 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 the pass-through. So grid manager is capable of uh, cutting off the GPU even more. And you can create a bunch of machines. This is only. With Sensor, you can do this. You can only do this with Send Desktop 7.1. No earlier version. So how do you go in and cut up and choose which kind of GPU profiles? Because now, actually, what I told before, you had four profiles or two profiles. Now suddenly you have 16, 32, 8, 4, uh, and so on. Uh, um, so this is an uh, example I've sure I've created. Uh, if we take to the left, uh, with the grid card, you have the you know a lot of memory and not so much uh, CUDA cores. Um, you can create four virtual machines, give them each four gigabyte memory, one and ninety-two CUDA cores, or you can split it up and say, okay, I want I want to create sixteen virtual machines with each one gigabyte memory, forty-eight CUDA cores. Or you can also use the last profile, which is actually 32, but then you don't you only have 24 code of course. I don't recommend that. Um, but you can do it. The other one is to create K2, is where you start with saying I, I just want to create two virtual machines with each four gigabyte memory, 536 code of course. That's typical. Some companies that really demand high graphical intense workload. But this is actually when you go in and see what do you need. Well, people they go in and they contact their their ISV and they say, "Oh, you need the biggest GPU." Well, this is actually where the the typical lakeside software and also uh, the Uber agent and also last, of course, the login VSI come in place and uh, and tell you 
you know, you, you can actually use the smaller profiles. Uh, so maybe they can use a K240 profile. And you can cut it up uh, to GPU much more and actually have a lot of uses on it and, and be much more efficient with the hardware. So understand the application if it's using either memory or GPU. Um, that's, that's a good place to, to do. I want to show you how it actually looks like. Uh, so when you go into Citrix and use the desktop 7.1, you can actually take, create a new machine and check a GPU profile and uh, attach it to, to the GPU. And uh, of course, if you already created the snapshot with the driver and everything, you, you take that machine, put it on, and you can then create a bunch of machines. Of course, it's also still it's limited to the amount of GPU profiles you have. But it's as easy as this. It's very easy to do. Only three clicks and you're done. From the sensor, uh, that has to be in place before you can do the other stuff in the, in the this and desktop studio. This is an example from uh, one of my clients. Is here the the grid, uh, the vGPU is already installed, and now the sensor six one search pack one six two sorry sensor six two search pack one. Uh, the, they, uh, Citrix have done a good job by creating this new tab, uh, seeing the GPU, and, and you can see how many profiles you have. So if you had actually uh, four GPUs, uh, the K2s, you would see much more smaller, pro uh, many more profiles in it. So it gives us a very good example on uh, how many GPUs do we have and how is it performing. So that's good stuff. So all that stuff was actually made for typical for for for, for VDI. Uh, if I even want to cut up the GPU even more, I think actually the Senap is actually doing a pretty good job here. So you're taking a physical server and uh, putting it on a server roaming system, and uh, each session they then take the that the, that um, yeah the GPU and sense workload and actually capable of sharing it with just one GPU. That's pretty cool. You can do that with Senap 6.5 uh, and only with DirectX 9. But now you can, with the Feature Pack 2, we released last year, DirectX 11 and up to OpenGL 4.3, and the new one, uh, you can also do that with Synthesis and so on. You can use 2008 R2, 2012, and 2012 R2. Let's look at how can I cut it up even more. Well, and this is actually an output the VGPU. It, this example I'm creating now with the K1 because it was four physical GPUs on one board. So now you can actually create four machines, giving them each G GPU, and then you're sharing it on each machine. And they're not having an impact on each other machine also. So it means that, let's say, uh, machine number one is impacting the entire GPU. Well, it mean, means then the machine number two is not getting impacted by the other one because it's isolated. You could also actually use vGPU, then you cut up the, these machines even more. Uh, so that's that's a way to do that. And in the K2 scenario of the grid and media grid, it would look like this, where you're giving each machine, and then they are sharing the, the resources. So that's pretty cool. You could do that. Um, if you were going to go uh, and look which uh, hardware OEMs are, are embracing the technology, Actually, this data is actually old, so you have to go into. You can go into media.com uh, and, and look at the NVIDIA grid and look at the hardware uh, supported uh, vendors. So uh, I know I, the IBM and uh, HP and uh, Dell and Sys, well, Supermicro. They have, uh, especially also Fujitsu. They have uh, put in a lot of new uh, hardware uh, servers. So it keep on it keep on coming more and more on. So this is pretty good because if I go back in March of last year, there were only about two here. So <laughs> the entire industry is changing. So that's NVIDIA has done a pretty good job by taking all the hardware OEMs and put it into their stack, embracing uh, the need uh, to the clients. Let's look a bit about the assessment. So this is the new thing I want to show you guys guys that Systrack have done an amazing job and they will show this technology to the market. Um, this stuff actually that hasn't been released yet. They will release the new version 7.0 of the Systrack. So you can do a, a, a assessment. You can put in a small piece of agent on all your physical machines 
either Windows or Linux. And then you can actually grab the information and see which kind of uh, GPUs they have. Are they using DirectX or are they using OpenGL? And what is their graphical workload? So that's a very good place to start to understand the, 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 the demand, the behavior, IOPS, GPU, and so on. Then suddenly you can go in and do, put it in and make a diagram and say, these are the profiles for the different applications I have in my environment before I want to virtualize them. So that's that's this uh, very crucial in my mind that you do this. I've been waiting a long time for this and they've been working very hard for this. So that's a good place to start. The other one is of course is also the modeling, the capacity planning. So that you can you can now, now do that with SysTrack virtual machine planner. And, and well, cut up the, the UC more per, per board. So to say uh, these graphic applications are you are working these how many hours per week and it's only these kind of users. So then you can actually put it into this graphic workload and applications who have maybe a lower rate lower demand you can put it into a smaller workload. So Again, you can go in and look at all these parameters, GPU usage, graphic memory usage, number of, of GPU driven apps, and temperature and frame doppler. Uh, the new stuff they put in, uh, they have coded for, uh, this is only primary, actually NVIDIA API that have done this, is they can go in and look at the uh, frame buffer usage, video usage, bus usage, and memory usage, bytes and percent, and temperatures and fan. So this is, uh, of course, is pretty important when you have virtualized all these applications and you suddenly have now have you know yeah, maybe hundreds of virtual desktops using a lot of GPUs you want to monitor us and see how actually are, are the system uh, giving the, the performance it should do so that's something people typical normal go in and monitor you haven't been able to do this now you can do this with Lakeside so you can do an accurate planning Right. The other one is Uber Agent for Splunk. So that's also very cool. Uh, this is only one uh, piece of um, information. So so Helge Klein, he has done an amazing job by, by coding uh, the, the Splunk agent. And you can install this the agent actually on the system machines also. They also do actually a lot of the stuff uh, that Lakeside is doing seeing uh, which kind of GPUs they do, which kind of applications, but also how much uh, are they actually working, uh, how much uh, are they using of the resource and giving you the real-time data. Let's go and uh, I want to give the word to Jerome from Login VSI and he can announce some new stuff. Okay, so um just a very short introduction. Login VSI has been around for a couple of years right now, and uh, we are very well known to do scalability testing. Uh, typically, what you do with Login VSI using a knowledge worker profile, for instance, using regular applications like Office, Internet Explorer, Java, etc., to simulate real users and using real data. And you can do sizing and capacity planning, load and stress testing, and production and change validation. Now, this is all well, especially if you want to do a, a, re a knowledge work. You just start with one user, load that to the system, and you keep adding test simulated users to that system. Now, this mechanism works because at a certain moment in time, the system will basically be overloaded and you know you don't have more capacity. And this has been the method for logging VSI for many years right now. So, well, Thomas already explained uh, Office 2013. Actually, what you can test with the regular VSI is start off testing with Office 2010, and then you find out that for that certain system, VSI Max was 143 uh, users. So typically, you could not run more than 143 users on the system. Now, the thing what happens once you install Office 2013, immediately your capacity will go down at least by 20%, and the VS, you will get a VSI Max of 114. Now, typically, the Typical workload within VSI Max is office oriented. And if you're doing graphics testing, of course, uh, the game becomes completely different. The problem is, is that um, if you do uh, sharing of hardware, 
and you're doing graphics application testing, the one thing you care about is what, what is the frames per second that uh, users will get when they're watching or using the application, the graphics application, on the endpoint. So what we're doing right now, when we're developing this, and we, we're expecting to uh, release uh, the first data in a couple of weeks, uh, is to develop a uh, testing framework for graphics applications. Uh, the concept is the same, is that you start off, for instance, with one user, for instance, in this example, it's Autodesk, and you can add more users slowly to the system to find out what the response time, or more importantly, what the frames per second is for the application. However, we will not use the typical VSI Max calculation because um, there's a different methodology to it. The most important thing is that when people are interested in doing graphics workloads, the frames per second and, and the output is highly, highly dependent on the type of application, but also on the content of the application. And using generic workloads to evaluate a card could be, you should do comparisons between cards, but the majority of the organizations are actually interested to find out how are their graphics applications with their data, how they are sizing. So what we're developing right now is this graphics testing framework in which you basically can drop any kinds of graphics application. The only thing that's important is that that application has their own methodology to run a loop or a demo mode or scripted mode so it can emulate the usage of the user. And typically what you do is you add that specific application to the graphics workload framework and you size up, we're starting with one user, basically the baseline, and you size up adding more use to the system. And VSI will find out what uh, the, uh, the response time or the frames per seconds are uh, for the application, but also what the frames per seconds is, of course, when you're adding users to the system and how is that overall for the other users. So we're developing the beta right now. I cannot give you real numbers. There will be some demo applications in there, but it is truly built to evaluate the graphics performance of your own applications. And the idea is once you start benchmarking, is that you can actually review the amount of frames per second uh, for one user and going up. So for instance, if the application can report uh, it has some kind of demo mode or looping mode or scripted macro mode, um, many applications can report their own um, frames per second. So they have some output somewhere in which they report when we ran this loop, it had an average frames per second of 30 and a maximum of 80 and a minimum of 12. Now we can aggregate that information, demonstrate that for the first user, but once you start adding use to the system, of course, because the graphics card is shared, it can go down. Now, this is fictional. Of course, if you're sizing well, it should be evenly straight. But you have to understand that frames per seconds are reported on different levels. So it's not just what the application reports in frames per second by itself. We'll also be able to use FRAPs to uh, monitor the frames per second independently from the application. And maybe you can see a different profile here. But what's even more important is that what's happening on the server when it comes to frames per second could potentially not be the same frames per second what a user sees. So if you are a user remoting a 3D application, actually the frames per second is limited by what the protocol has been configured to. So we'll also be able to uh, do load testing and demonstrate the average uh, frames per second on a protocol level, so what actually the user will see. So it could be that the first users are experiencing 60 uh, frames per second. And then when you add more users, because the GPU is, get, is getting contented, or the disk is getting contented, or even the GPU or the CPU is getting contented, the frames per second go down. But that behavior is different than uh, what could happen on the server side. So that's why they're developing the framework. Um, you can add your own business graphics applications. Um, you can specifically use your own data sets or your own models. So because, uh, well, Autodesk is, is a good example. It can be used in so many different ways and so many different formats. So for many organizations, it's very, very important to add their own uh, usage models. Uh, but most importantly, you can actually, with VSI, you will be able to uh, report on what is the actual frames per second on the client side when you start adding users? And that will give you a complete different dimension and a true 
reliable prediction of what the user experience will be if you're adding one or two users or you scale up to 32 users, for instance. Now, uh, because this is all beta, uh, we're still in uh, development and we hope to release the uh, first beta in the upcoming weeks. I can imagine that maybe some people are interested. Oh, um, here we go. If you are interested in uh, how the graphics workload framework is developing, just email us at info at login.vsi.com and just put in the sub subject GFX. We'll keep you posted with newsletters and progress of the development of the graphics workload. And if you have any specific questions, feel free to mail us. By the way, if you're interested in VSI at all, you can download a express version from our website, which is uh, www.loginvsi.com. So that was a quick update on what we're doing with uh, Login VSI. That's very cool. Thank you, Jeroen, for uh, attending the webinar and sharing this great news. I think this will be well received in, in the community. So, Thomas, uh, could we take a look at the questions? So we have the first question here. Is it or will it be possible to allocate more than one VGPU for a single VM, Windows client or server? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, so if you take the vSphere, you're actually capable of, of uh, assigning more GPUs. Yes, you can do that. You can also do it with sensor, but it's not something you can do in the graphic uh, interface. You can do it on the command line. It's not supported. It's not supported. It's not supported with Citrix, but you can do it. Yeah, w will there be support for send desktop hosted on ESXi, or will it just be sensor for doing hardware virtualized GPU? <sighs> well, it's if you take setup, then you're actually sharing the GPU. So I, I would say yes, you can do that now, and that's actually supported from VMware because that's direct pass through with the GPU to the, the server or main system. And then Citrix are then sharing the GPU for OpenGL and DirectX. But if he's talking more about how NVIDIA is doing with the vGPU, again, vGPU is hardware profiling of a GPU cutting up. Um, so no, you cannot do that with the VMware yet. And I don't know anything yet. And if I died, and if, it, yeah, if I did, I couldn't tell you. Okay, over to next. Uh, do you get HDX 3D Pro or similar performance when using remote PC? Yeah, so actually, yes, you can get that. That's true. So if you have the same GPU um, in the bare metal, well, of course, you will always say, so when you use a hypervisor, right, you, there's always some small percentage you, you lose. That's the same thing with, uh, with actually CPU and everything. Uh, but it's very, very small. We're talking about 2 to 3 percent, 5, maybe, max. But that's, uh, but that, but that's actually a good, good example that now we can actually get these, uh, these numbers verified with login BSI or with, uh, with Lakeside and so on. So again, that's pretty cool. We can now get the numbers he's, he's asking for. But yeah, it's pretty close. So in, in your experience, what's is the best, the cheapest, smallest solution uh, to, to, to set up a POC? What's, what's normal out there? What is the cheapest solution? Well, if you already have some hardware in place, you know, if you have a, a, a workstation with, with a GPU, you can quickly take the remote PC. And then, of course, you, you still need the controller from Citrix. But that's, this is very fast. That's a very fast way to test and verify if you want to use it. I still recommend uh, looking at, at, at the more uh, if you want to uh, evaluate the grid or uh, the, the AMD the cards, then you have to contact your hardware OEM and uh, you can always try this uh, try and buy a unit. Another way is actually using the Amazon. They also have actually now um, very capable of building an environment quickly and testing it. On, on any technology stack. So that would actually be cheaper than buying a $5,000 key two card? Well, I would say no, because when, when you're actually doing a try and buy, you're trying the stuff before you're buying it, right? So the only stuff, only stuff you're, you're paying money for is actually people doing the stuff and not the hardware. That's the concept of doing the, the try and buy concept. At Amazon, you still have to, to pay for the, the amount of machines running and the data being sent, but yes, it could be maybe the cheaper way of doing it. Cool. So another question here regarding the mask example. Was it being accessed remotely from oil rig or was it uh, on a landline? That was on landline in this case. 
there's, a, there's another question here. Did you see any performance degradation when using the desktop viewer toolbar? Uh, yeah, I know. I think I know what it, what they think about. Well, there is with some some GPUs there is actually some issue with the uh, the toolbar where in some case you have to remove it. Um, again, that's why it's very important that you give it, go to the latest version of of the agent and also the using the latest version of the driver. Um, so I, I, again. It, it all depends. Uh, anyways, if anyone have an issue with the, the stuff they have, I either recommend, of course, they're going to support at com or they're also welcome to reach out to me. And I'll be happy to to, to look at the stuff they, they're having an issue with. Yeah, they, they can write to my email at thomas at com. They can also find me on, on Twitter. Uh, that's underscore uh, P-O-P-P-E-L-G-A-A-R-D. Yeah, I will send out your contact information when I send the email with a repair link to this webinar. So the final question here, have you seen any difference in terms of RDS on 2008 or Windows 2012? Yeah, I have. I have. You know, so 2012 is actually uh, it's pretty good, right? So, uh, well, the file system is much faster. They have optimized uh, also the other components in it. Uh, it is, I think it's actually, it is, it's a bit faster. Um, that's my experience with, uh, with the implementation that I've done on it. But the problem is, uh, <laughs> it's not anyone who can go up to 2012 R2, because many times some companies have legacy applications, or maybe the ISC is not supporting it, uh, even though it makes sense to go up to it. I'll always recommend using the 2012, because it is faster. Uh, but again, people are sometimes uh, they have to go down to the 2008. But it's not that bad. We're, we're talking about small percentage, um, but stuff you can get quickly validated, and that you can do with login VSI, right? So they show the FPS. So, so when the login VSI is out, we we will probably get some more solid numbers on, in terms of performance. Yeah, so we can do that. Finally, yeah, instead of how we do it before, and also another way is also, of course, uh, Sean Bass and Penetrist have been doing a pretty good job and, and showing the, the frame per second also with the, that technology stack, but uh, yeah. Okay, thank you very much, Thomas and Jerome, for joining on, on this uh, webinar. In a couple of weeks, we're going to run a seminar with uh, Control X and their new SmartX 3.0 version. That's going to be very interesting. And I'm going to include the link to the registration there as well when I'm sending out the replay to this webinar. So thank you, everyone, for joining the webinar. Bye. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.